Anthony Ladd, one of uh, Fred Rimel's three runners. Fred having won with ESB, Nicholas Silver and Gay Tripp. Dave Cartwright riding Sonny Ladd, this ten-year-old who'll be carrying the colours of uh, Mrs. Christine Sangster and won the Topham Trophy last season. In, uh, sorry, in 72. Sonny Ladd, number 13. And that was Brian Fleck. Well, um, John Hayne. And uh, you'll notice that the three um, colours, all very similar to those of the three runners for Edward Courage, ridden by Lord Oaksey. We haven't seen him come through yet. Here comes Chris Collins, who'll be easily the tallest rider. There's Lord Oaksey, John Oaksey. He's, of course, on Royal Relief. There'll be Bill Smith on Spanish Steps and Graham Thorner. And here's the Duke of Albuquerque with his damaged collarbone. Can we just have another look at him, I wonder? Just follow him, because he doesn't look at all fit to take part in one of the greatest steeplechases in the world. But there he is. 55-year-old Duke of Albuquerque, and he's past the vet. There he is. Speaks very little uh, Spanish, and I believe Fred Winter's not here to support him. I think Fred's had to go to uh, Toaster to, to supervise his runners there. And the Duke, of, co of course, riding Nerio, the Spanish bred horse of his own breeding. Uh, the, the blinkers on him now. Lescargo, number two, who was third last year. A winner of the uh, Cheltenham Gold Cup in 1771, an 11-year-old, trained by Dan Moore. And Dan's had uh, his sights on this race all year. He hasn't been too keen to uh, get him jizzed up for his uh, other engagements. And he hopes he's really got him uh, keen and active now. Tommy Carberry riding. Lescargo, number two, the second favourite. Or was at the early show. Just going away from us is... The, the favourite, Red Rum, and Billy Ellis and his lad has done a, uh, done a great job of uh, getting a shine on him. And this horse, a nine-year-old, now with 12 stone, last year's winner. But he's a horse that has to be ridden from behind, so I don't think the weight will make all that difference to him. I've been shopping around before I came up here, and I managed to get 10 to 1 against his chance of winning again this afternoon. We'll see later how the betting goes, but there he is. He looks... Uh, a great tribute to his trainer, Ginger McCain. Brown Fletcher, of course, riding him. Bit of Dorothy Squire's representative. John Burke riding this horse who won at market races at Sedgefield, minor races, but stays well. I mean, could just conceivably run into a place at long odds. 26 Norwegian flag. A fairy tale result. Wolverhampton with the white face and the sheepskin noseband. Owned by Bill Davis, the first horse he ever had, and bought to uh, carry his colours in this Grand National, his first venture at Aintree. Wolverhampton won at Wolverhampton, was second to Devlin's Green of Warwick last time. Stays really well, ridden by Ray Quinn, and uh, only a seven-year-old, so he's improving. Could have a squeak of an outside chance. Wolverhampton, number 36. Rough Silk, one of the uh, um, six, Grand uh, six Grand National candidates from Ireland, and one of the uh, outsiders from there, one of the least regarded, written by Mouse Morris, who's just uh, turned professional from amateur, trained by Eddie O'Grady, 11-year-old. He's had uh, 13 races this season. He's won a couple of little races at Bellewstown and Sligo, but uh, be very doubtful if he can win, unless there'll be a Cohu-type result or Foynaven. 37 Rough Silk, who was going to be ridden by his owner, uh, Mr. John Carden, despite that broken nose. We didn't have a look at Mr. Carden's broken nose, but um, I hope he's in a bit better shape than the Duke of Albuquerque. Mr. Carden, a 37-year-old Manchester solicitor. Q Parade run four times this season uh, without success, won at our last season. Q Parade number seven. He's been uh, unsuccessful in three starts this season. He went a uh, great gallop in this race three years ago, and he fell in the lead at Beechers. But he's never done anything uh, comparable since. He'll be one of the two horses carrying the colours of Mr. Bill Whitbread, whose main hope, Barona, had, uh, went lame and had to be withdrawn. That's Bo Bob, who'll be ridden by Jeremy Glover. There's a horse who looks very well, straight Vulgan, owned by Mrs. Sandiford, trained by Gordon Richards in the Mount of Ron Barry. There, he's, uh, he'll, he'll like this sort of ground. I don't think it'll be uh, too firm for him. 
and uh, Gordon Richards got him looking a picture. It was Dickens, one of the long shots, the mount of Andy Turnell, and Andy Turnell with the jockey who rides the shortest. He perches round their neck somehow, he gets his uh, toes right under his chin, but he sits on pretty well. And Charles Dickens, um, two runs to his uh, name this season, moderate third at Kemptervine Pendle, and then unplaced at Sandown. Argent, another horse who hasn't uh, shown much uh, this season, just three races. He fell at Haydock and he's run plates at Weatherby and Nottingham. He was trained in Ireland, where he won at Leopardstown last season. Quite a good horse there, but hasn't recaptured that form. Now with Eric Cousins uh, at Tarpoli in Cheshire. And going to be ridden by Bobby Coonan, number three, Argent, who was just beaten on um, Carrick Beg in 63, about to mount... Royal Relief, this horse who won the two-mile champion chase at Cheltenham, now facing a, a distance double that uh, length. But a horse by Flush Royal, a Cesarewicz winner on the flat, and he should stay better than he does. I don't know quite why he doesn't appear to stay on park course. That's Peter Beckwith-Smith, the clerk of the course, breathing a sigh of relief that everything has gone off according to Cocker. Uh, and John Oaksey on Royal Relief, one of the three runners for Edward Courage others being Spanish Steps and Quintus. Now, I couldn't see from here what uh, overweight Chris Collins was uh, carrying. He, he reckoned to be putting up 21 pound overweight. He was placed on Mr. Jones and Stephen Society, of course, the winner of the Iron Curtain Grand National at Pardubice, a winner of twice of uh, Hunter Chases at Newcastle and, and uh, Kelso, and then he was second to Mr. Midland, not too lucky, in the four-mile National Hunt Chase at Cheltenham. This horse stays forever, and although he's got all this overweight, he could have a squeak of an outside chance. Stephen Society, number 19. And here comes the Duke on Nerio, number 11. Eight-year-old carrying 10-6. Trained by Fred Winter. And the winner at Worcester in November, his easiest best form was when he was third to the Dickler at Newbury a couple of races ago. 12 is Rough House, another of Fred Rimel's um, trio, written by the very capable apprentice uh, uh, amateur, I'm sorry, uh, John Burke. And he ran uh, third at Cheltenham, finishing well, second at uh, Doncaster before that, a winner at uh, Taunton, Warwick, Sandown. Useful uh, form to his name, seems to be improving, was a point-to-point -point, uh, performer. Number 12, Rough House. Roman Holiday. He's won 15 chases. Rather a moody sort of horse. He's carrying the colours of Lord Chelsea. Trained by Verley Buick, and that's Jeff King in the saddle. One of our best jockeys, but uh, very unlucky as far as the Grand National is concerned. Ten. Behind him is Rough House, John Burke. 21, riding in his first national. That's Sonny Laird, Dave Cartwright. Dave Cartwright's fourth ride, he's 29. The cross belt's there on Joe Guest, he's 41, riding Bahia Dorada. And Glenn Kiln, carrying the first colours of Noel Le Maire, rather than uh, red rum. Shane Mann. Shane Mann behind him. Another Irish hope. The cross belt's there. Was Pat Buckley. This is Paul Kellaway, though. Paul Kellaway on Cloudsmere. Richard Pittman on Francophile. This is Pearl of Montreal. Then Deblin's Green. Nigel Wackley. The cross belts there of Ken White on Rouge Autumn. And then Jimmy Burke in the star there of Dorothy Squires on Norwegian Flag. That's Ascari, Pat Black, putting up two pounds overweight. The noted former champion has done frequently in the past. I wonder how you feel, Terry, at this point when uh, you go up to have a look at that first. Well, Peter, it's been some nationals um, I've never really sort of gone up to look at it. And other times you just go there just sort of to be curious. Um, it's really immaterial, actually. I think if the horse is running very free to you go into the first to look at it, 
you, 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 you do go and look at it. But if he, you know, if he pulls up before the road before you get there, um, you pull up and you don't bother to go there. Because when they look at it, it, may, it, it, it makes no difference really. Because that fence is going to be there whether you, you look at it or you're not. Yes, I can see the highest price paid for a National Hunt performer, written there by Martin Blackshaw. Martin, 23, having his second national ride. And just a reminder that soon after they jump off 30 and having his third national ride, and just uh, for the benefit of my colleagues out in the country, I think I should draw your attention to the fact that the blue of Tubbs is identical to the blue of the national ride. It won't be long before the starter has these 42 under orders. He's just about to go across towards his rostrum, checking his watch. That's Royal Relief, Lord Oxy. And uh, Terry Middlecom just uh, tapping his heart here. He says this is where, where the ticking rate uh, really mounts. And now Scout, 8 to 1 co favorite with Les Cargo. So this, uh, clearly the one they've come for. There he is, number 34, Scout with the Tunku that's beside him. And that's Tubbs with the sash. Charles Dickens, Deblins Green with a broad seam. Dunno walking right. Behind Dunno is Red Rum. Okay, Continental going, go Continental going left. Hugh Parade, number seven. Shane Mann on his far side, the Tunku with the sash. Charles Dickens walking right with Pearl of Montreal. Bahia Dorada on the far side, straight Vulgan, the cross belts of San Falu, Color Hill the spotted cap, the star on the back of Mildor. That's Ascari in the halved colors, which were carried to a sensational success by Cahu in 1947, 100 to 1 winner. Estoile, number 38. Red Rum, the Tanku, Brian Fletcher looking very relaxed. And Scout is now the favorite. Scout seven to one from eight to one. Well, they're under starters orders and Tommy Stack will not know that he's riding the national favorite. Being called into line Princess Camilla just uh, playing up a little bit centre, bounding away from uh, the one-strand tape. The other 41 all in line, and she doesn't want to join him at the moment, and giving Martin Blackshaw an anxious moment or two now. One or two of the others turning, and she's being led up. And the others go back to the tape now, and this looks as though it could be it, and they're away. And she's away all right, all away. Caracola just a little bit slow. And as they stream down towards the Melling Road, Sonny Ladd, one of the first to show with Nerio towards the outside. Right up with them on the inner is Rouge Autumn. And then Bahia Dorada on the outside. And it's Bahia Dorada, Nerio, Sonny Ladd. And then Rouge Autumn. And behind them, Les Gargo and Stephen Sassati. And that's the order as we join John Hanman. It's Bahia Dorada in the lead from Straight Vulgan, then Ascari, then towards the outside, Pearl of Montreal. But here Dorada jumps it first. The leaders are all over all right, but it's Royal Relief who's gone on the outside. Royal Relief, the faller at the first, and he's the only one, I think. As they go to the second, it's Bahia Dorada and Charles Dickens, then Rough Silk, then comes Ascari, and they're streaming over the second. They all look all right at the second, and as they go to the third, Charles Dickens, Bahia Dorada, then comes Rough Silk, then Sunny Lad, then Straight Falcon, and it was Rough Silk who led over that. They're mostly over it all right, though. There's one gone. Go Continental is down. And as they race towards the fourth with Rough Silk in the lead, over to Julian Wilson. Rough Silk, Bahia Dorada towards the inside, Charles Dickens towards the outside, and a faller there. A sixer has gone at that one, and Charles Dickens leads on the outside with Colour Hill right up with them on the outside with Pearl of Montreal towards the inside is Rough Silk, and over the fifth and over it. Charles Dickens over from Rough Silk over in second. Straight Bulgans over in the third place. 
and Bahia Dorad a very, very bad mistake and now being pulled up as the leaders run down to Beechers and very few gone so far as they face up to Beechers. On the outside, Charles Dickens. On the inside is Ruff Sill. Then comes Pola Montreal and Straight Falcon and over Beechers. The field streaming over Beechers and almost all the horses have jumped it all right. In fact, I can't see one faller at Beechers. They're all over. Every single horse has jumped Beechers. Charles Dickens the leader. From Rough Silk in second, Sonny Ladd on the inside now goes up to dispute the lead. Sonny Ladd with Charles Dickens, Rough Silk is third. Then on the inside is Rouge Autumn, fifth on the outside is Straight Vulgar. No, they were all jumped that one. Lescargo is next, then comes Rough House and Cloudsmere. On the outside is Glen Kiln as they come to the canal turn. Sonny Ladd over first from Charles Dickens in second. Rouge Autumn is third in fourth place on the outside. The faller was Argent at the canal turn. Argent is a faller at the canal turn. There's another one gone as well. Caracola was a faller at the canal turn and Hugh Parade as well. And Devlin's Green was a faller at the canal turn. And over Valentine's, at Valentine's, Beggar's Way has refused as we rejoin John Hammer. And it's Charles Dickens, Sunny Lad. And then on the outside, Pearl of Montreal. Then comes Straight Falcon. And they're being trapped by Rough Silk. But Charles Dickens just leads from Sunny Lad. Then comes Pearl of Montreal and Shane Mann is a faller and Bo Bob has gone there and they're all streaming over that next fence among the back markers is Roman Holiday but it's Charles Dickens just in the lead from Pearl of Montreal, Sunny Lad, Straight Falcon, then Rough Silk, then comes Glen Kiln and Spanish Steps and Rough House, then comes Lascargo going well. Behind him is Falcon Town, then Mr. Collins on Stephen Society going the shortest way on the inner but Charles Dickens in the lead from Sunny Lad, Lascargo, behind Lascargo is Pearl of Montreal and over to Peter O'Sullivan. Still Charles Dickens from Sunny Lad, Les Cargo, Pearl of Montreal, then Spanish Steps just in behind him with Vulgan Tarn and Straight Vulgan and San Falou and Glen Kiln and coming down to the next and it's Pearl of Montreal, Charles Dickens, Sunny Lad, Glen Kiln, Spanish Steps, Les Cargo and coming to this fence now number 13 in the national and it's Charles Dickens and Pearl of Montreal who touch down together from Sunny Ladders mistake there by Stephen Society and coming up towards the next Pearl of Montreal they're being hampered by a loose horse the two leaders Pearl of Montreal and Charles Dickens and Sunny Ladd and Les Cargo and then just in behind them Spanish Steps and then comes Rouge Autumn behind uh, Rouge Autumn is San Falou, Vulcan Town right up there, Red Rum going well strongly in the center of the field there and coming up to the chair now and as they do so it's Charles Dickens with a loose horse perilously near to him, Charles Dickens jumps it and he's very nearly brought down but he survives all right, Lescargo jumps it on the inside, Pearl of Montreal just in the lead and it's Pearl of Montreal as they come to the water from Charles Dickens and Lescargo and Sunny Ladd and then Vulcan Town, then comes Spanish Steps, behind Spanish Steps is Rough Silk and then San Falou and then Red Rum and behind him is Straight Falcon and then Norwegian Flag on the inside of Norwegian flag is uh, uh, Glen Kiln. On the inside of Glen Kiln is Rouge Autumn. And then comes Scout on the outside. Then Nerio. Behind Nerio is Stephen Society with Princess Camilla. And then comes Francophile and then Dunno. Behind uh, Dunno is um, the crossbelts there of Wolverhampton. And as they run down towards the next fence and cross the Melling Road. It's Pearl of Montreal, Vulgan Town, Les Gargo, Charles Dickens, Spanish Step, Sunny Lad and towards the outside Vulgan Town as we rejoin John Hanlon. And they're almost at the 17th and it's Pearl of Montreal on the inside from Vulgan Town. Charles Dickens right up with them. Lascargo is close up. All the leaders over that safely. Vulgan Town disputing it with Charles Dickens and Pearl of Montreal. Then comes straight Vulgan and Red Rum taking very close order now. Last year's winner as they jump the 18th. And again all the leaders over safely except for Straight Falcon. Straight Falcon went at that and it's Falcon Town from Charles Dickens. Then comes Sunny Lad, Lascargo, Red Rum. Then Scout taking close order on the outside. Then comes Pearl of Montreal. Glen Kiln's gone at the ditch and as they go to the next fence, the 20th, it's Charles Dickens, Lascargo and Red Rum as we join Julian Wilson. Vulcan down, Charles Dickens with the leader over that one from Lascargo with a good pitch on the inside. Red Rum much closer now on the outside. Vulcan Town's in fourth place now. Scout's got a good pitch towards the outside as they come to the one before Beechers. And it's Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens who leads over it from Lascargo on the inside. Red Rum on the outside. 
Scout is right up there. Baugentown's in fifth place as they run down towards Beaches for the second and last time. And as they do so, the leader is now the 1973 winner, Red Rum. Red Rum from Charles Dickens, Lescargo, Scout and Baugentown as they jump Beaches. And Red Rum leads over it from Charles Dickens, second. Scout is third, Lescargo is fourth. In fifth place, Spanish steps in sixth place is Baugentown. In seventh is Sunny Lad. In eighth on the outside is Rock Silk. And then comes Stephen Society as they jump the 23rd. Red Rum is over from Charles Dickens, second. Scout is third. Lascargo is fourth. Fifth is, Roy is uh, Spanish Steps. Sixth is Baugentown. Seventh is Rock Silk. Eighth is Stephen Society. Ninth is Sunny Light as they come to the canal turn where six fell the first time, including Rough House. And at the canal turn, Red Rum over in front from Charles Dickens, second. Scout is third. Lascargo is fourth. Spanish Steps, fifth. Baugentown is sixth. Rock Silk is seventh. Stephen Society, eighth. San Falu, ninth. Tenth is Sunny Lad. Eleventh is Princess Camilla as they jump Valentine's. And again, Red Rum is over from Charles Dickens, second. Stephen Society, a bad mistake at that one. Red Rum still in front from Charles Dickens, Lescargo, Scout. Then comes Spanish Steps, Bogentown, and Rough Silk, and these are clear as we rejoin John Hammer. And Red Rum's got four to jump, and he's four lengths in front of Scout, who's under pressure. Then Charles Dickens and Lescargo. A gap after that to Spanish Steps, then Bogentown. Then comes Rough Silk. And Red Rum over the fourth from home in the lead from Charles Dickens. Then Scout and Lescargo, Spanish Steps, Bogentown, Rough Silk, San Felu, and Sunny Lad as they go to the third last. It's Red Rum still out in front of Charles Dickens. Then comes Lascargo. Then comes Scout, who's still under pressure. Then comes Spanish Steps, Falcon Town, Rough Silk, San Feliu, Sunny Lad, Dono, and Nerio. As they go across the Melling Road, Red Rum in the clear lead from Lascargo. Then comes Charles Dickens and Scout and Spanish Steps, and Red Rum in the lead and over to Peter O'Sullivan. It's Red Rum with Lescargo chasing him now. The two top weights, Red Rum from Lescargo, Red Rum for England trying to complete that great double that hasn't been done since Reynoldtown being pressed by Les Gargo now for Ireland. Then comes Spanish Steps improving on Charles Dickens and then Scout and behind them Vulcan Town and then Rough Silk. They're coming now to the second last fence in the National and it's Brown Fletcher on Red Rum being pressed by Tommy Carberry on Les Gargo. The two top weighted ones at the second last in the National. It's Red Rum with a clear advantage there from Les Gargo who jumps it second. Then comes... Uh, Charles Dickens in third and Spanish steps four and this is the last fence now and it looks as though Red Rum's only got to jump it but remember he was deprived of it on the flat last year or rather he deprived the winner of it last year and now he's jumped it in the lead and it's Red Rum and this great local crowd giving him a tremendous ovation Red Rum from Les Gardo. Tommy Carberry trying to close the gap but he's not going to they come to the elbow a furlong to run he's got a big weight to remember 23 pounds more than last year but he's going to hold them it's Red Rum from, from Les Gargo in second, Charles Dickens third, and Spanish steps four, and racing up towards the line, and Red Rum getting the ovation of his career, and it's Brown Fetcher acknowledging the cheers of the crowd as he comes to the line, the winner of the national, Les Gargo in second, and Charles Dickens third, and fourth, his Spanish steps, and then comes Rough Silk and Vulcan Town, behind them Rouge Autumn, and then the gallant Duke of Albuquerque on Nerio, and behind him comes San Falu, then Norwegian Flag, and then Scout and Dunno, and behind them come Quintus, and then Tubbs, and behind Tubbs Escari, and then Sunny Laird, and behind Sunny Laird is Princess Camilla, and those are the finishers. And here is Brown Fletcher. 26-year-old Brown Fletcher on his third national winner, no less, and the result of the 1974 national first number one, Red Rum, owned by Mr. Noel Lemaire, trained by Donald McCain and written by Brian Fletcher. Second was number two, Les Cargo, owned by Mr. Raymond Guest, trained by Dan Moore, written by Tommy Carberry. Officially, it's a photo, in fact, for second and third, and I think we'll find he's second and third is number 30, Charles Dickens. The dream has been repeated. A gallant effort by Lascargo, who was receiving one pound from Red Rum. But what a great horse he's proved himself today, because he's beaten a dual gold cup winner, giving him weight. There's a man who is entitled to smile, and what a reception the crowds are given. This is a national winner, really worthy of the great chase. A really good horse. Crowds with police aid.